our next speaker is from Germany. It's uh, Wiebke Mieder from Spiegel. And uh, Wiebke, since 2019, has been in charge of the subscription growth business for all products at the Spiegel. It includes digital and print, and she is responsible for the development of the circulation and revenues of digital products and the further development of digital marketing as well as the existing sales analysis and e-commerce process. So in short, everything what's on digital and how to get money out of this. And she will give us a presentation on subscriptions, pros and cons of uh, free trials. So Vipke, I can see yes. your presentation already. So I think you're ready, so please go ahead. Okay, I hope you can hear me. Yes, perfect. Okay, great. Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, today, I want to give a hands-on insight uh, on the discussion we had in-house about uh, pros and cons of free trials. Uh, but before that, i just give you a quick introduction on the agenda. I'll start with who we are for all those of you who do not know who the Spiegel is. Then I'll give some insights of our test settings and what we've learned about it in the end. So I hope you can just take away some inspiration for, for your own um, news brands. So who we are, our company and some figures. Um, Der Spiegel is a German-based news magazine founded in 1947. Um, and yes, you can see here the first, first ever printed issue on the left side and then a more actual cover um, of our print edition on the right hand side. Um, Spiegel Online was the first news magazine website um, online, one day before the Times, in fact. We published uh, Spiegel Online and pushed it to the web in 1994. And um, so I can say that Der Spiegel has a very long history in being online and uh, experimenting with uh, digital distribution models. And finally, in uh, 2018, we launched our product Spiegel Plus. It's uh, more or less uh, a flat rate of all our, to all our premium, uh, premium content on the website and also um, an access to our digital magazine, which is more or less a replica of the print magazine. So subscription growth for uh, Spiegel Plus. Um, now we have more than 100 70,000 uh, subscribers who pay for us. Um, you can see the, the green line. This is our full paid access. Then we have a red line, um, which uh, contains the, the special offers we have in the market. Um, the, the yellow line you can see are our free trials and uh, the gray line are all the subscribers we have in, in the app stores. So um, you can see here uh, clearly the COVID bump we have, and I think you all can see in, in your um, traffic and maybe also your subscriptions. Um, and now I want to talk about some, some tests we've made through this uh, phase and through the year. Um, before that, I just want to mention the customer lifecycle. Um, which led us to, to our team strategy. So um, when we talk about subscriptions, I think it's very special to, um, to make, uh, to, to be clear of that the moment of truth, so the, the point of decision when a customer wants to, to be part of your subscriber base continues and comes back every single month. And um, so we have a strategy that before that moment of truth, we have a team that is focused on acquisition and performance marketing and stuff like that. And after the first moment of truth, so when a user decides to subscribe, um, we have a CRM and retention team who uh, wants to make sure that we have a good uh, customer lifetime value and uh, that this uh, KPI is growing. So this is our strategy. We focus on retention. And so uh, we have a test strategy that says, we believe that doing A for people B will make outcome C happen. We'll know this when we see data D and feedback E. This is a quote of Craig Sullivan, a real, really mastermind when it comes to ABN testing and conversion optimization. And uh, when we 
when COVID hit the ground and we've seen really huge uh, traffic peaks, um, we wondered um, if we could in a way monetize this for us. And uh, for the first time we um, were pushing our Spiegel Plus offering in display ads, not just on our paywall, but also on very different displays and formats on our website. And we saw that people were really willing to subscribe for the free trial. Um, and then the next step came along and we wanted to develop a pricing strategy for our trial phase because uh, we, we saw that the people who subscribed during COVID uh, because they, they realized the value of our quality journalism, um, not to push fake news on, on Facebook or other platforms, but really to, to do the research and tell people the things they had to know. Um, we thought that this could be a good point to, to test if the trial phase really has to be free or if we could take some money for that. So the first test is iteration we set up um, is that the paywall continue to offer the free trial, but all the other display and formats uh, we have, you can see that on the left side, um, in banners and banner rolls all over our website, um, pushed other offerings in the market. And we wanted to, to test for this first iteration, just an acceptance um, to, to make sure that people really are willing to pay um, and, and do not need a, a free trial. And why didn't we roll out that for the paywall as well? Because we wanted to make sure that the editorial team um, was not afraid that we could um, kill their article performances in that way. Um, and then we, we saw a, a really deep acceptance of the pricing models. And so we decided uh, to, to roll out this, this price, price test all over our website. And I just want to give you an, an insight how it looked like. Um, so you can see here different uh, banners we put on the website in different sections of the page. Um, and for the second iteration, we chose that the free trial had to be kicked out and every single touch point for the user should uh, offer the first month for one euro. So th that we have uh, had a, a database for the following test settings. And even the paywall, you can see it here, um, did not continue offering the free trial, but the first special offer we decided to test. Um, and even on the web shop. So um, we've seen that conversions did not decline, but increased, um, surprise for all. And so we uh, set up another iteration um, where we wanted to test the one euro offer against a five euro offer for the first month, and then against a three month for 30 euros offer, which combines the price test with the term contract test in a way. Um, and we pushed this uh, test on site all over the website, but also through retargeting on uh, social and, and search um, advertising activities. Um, we set it up as a split test with equal distribution and the results after two months, um, you can see here 48% took the one euro offer 29% the five euro offer, 23% uh, the three months for 30 euro offer. That's complicated, sorry. <laughs> um, the conversion tendencies and full paid con subscriptions increased um, against the, the free trial phase we, we had before since we launch, launched uh, Spiegel Plus. And uh, to, to talk about churn rates, it's, it's a little too early, um, but I'll I just want to say that you can be confident and, and take money for the journalism you offer. So the learnings we made through these tests were 
people pay for a trial phase, definitely. You don't have to be worried about your conversion rates at all. Free trials does not perform better than pay trial. A transparent communication of terms through months, for example, seems to have a positive effect on the customer lifetime value. Different price points may attract different and more subscribers than just one. And very important, un onboard your editorial staff and just uh, keep them on the same path you want to uh, develop the business. This is, uh, I think, really important. Um, just uh, dis discuss with them why you want to change the, the, the focus of uh, conversions and just turn it more into a path with, where the, the customer lifetime value is your key performance indicator. And so that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ipke, very much. I have already several questions to you. So can you say how many subscribers did you get through this trial? New subscribers through this? New subscribers. Well, um, this was a really a uh, long test. So I think um, in the end, we talk about 40,000 subscribers or something. Um, yeah, that's that was a big surprise because we really... Um, thought uh, at the beginning that uh, the, the one euro against the, the free trial would, of course, decline our conversion rate, but it didn't. The opposite was, was, was the fact. And there is a question from uh, one of the viewers. Uh, what was the conversion rate of uh, free trial, this COVID case? Free trial, COVID case? What was the um, conversion rate? Yeah. Conversion rate. Um, it's about, it's, it depends a little on the channels. Um, if we talk about the paywall as, as the main touch point for, for our users, we talk about of a conversion rate about 20, 25%, depending on the, on the article, of course. Um, and if we talk about the, the banners and the display ads I, I show you, uh, we talk about 25% um, conversion rate. You were satisfied with the result? Yes. Yeah. And uh, my next question is, do you also know how many, okay, COVID is still going on and it will be a topic, yes. like at, it seems like at least half a year, yes. but uh, are these people still staying with you or, yes. or, or, or some are leaving because they just... They, they tend to stay with us and um, they tend to develop a, a higher stickiness when they come from a paid trial phase than, mm -hmm. uh, than the ones who, who come, come from a free trial phase, yes. So it shows that they appreciate more the value of the content what they are receiving. I think so, yes. Because it, it, it seems very interesting because at least what we can observe here, there was this, this peak of interest when COVID started and then people kind of felt tired of this information and they just skipped uh, consuming media at all. So in yes. your case, if they are still paying and reading, it shows that they are very motivated. Yes, yes. We can see in our statistic more or less a COVID bump. Um, but uh, the, the growth rates continue to go up. So I think we just, um, we just sped up the development of our, of our subscription base, but did not have a, have a decline um, in any, any way, yes. Did you also change something in the content? Like did you did some research for what kind of information and content people are looking for and are ready to pay? Yes, we had really hard discussions um, with our editorial team about the question if, uh, if stories um, related to COVID should be free for all or not. And we decided that we, of course, have to offer um, free, free stories that cover the main topics, but all the, the deeper research and interviews, we uh, try to, to lock down behind the paywall, yes. Mm -hmm. Then we have a question from Rudolf, uh, who is watching. Uh, hi, could you tell us more about the collaboration and onboarding the editorial team? Uh, for example, do you offer some extra content after ad campaign is launched? Well, uh, we, we talk a lot with our editorial team. And um, I think the main trigger point when it comes to campaigning and uh, make, make Spiegel Plus more um, more viewable for, for our audience um, is, is the newsletter strategy. 
Um, so uh, the subscription growth team and the auditorial staff um, have a, a daily meeting where we talk about just like the, the results of the tests um, about campaigns and um, the editorial team just uh, gives us insights which big stories will come um, so that we can, can push teasers on Facebook, social media um, and to make the, the content just accessible for a broader audience. Does it work also from other side that you are actually coming to the editorial team and saying people were really very willing to pay for this, this and this content, could you please produce more on this topic? Well, I think that's, that's not my role, <laughs> but of course we have uh, in the editorial team, there are um, specialists for the premium content we offer and they try to coach, coach the team and the editors um, which, um, which kind of, of stories um, drive conversions, but also, and I think that's the mo more important part, uh, which stories are read by our paying subscribers because there you have, you have a gap between uh, content that produces new subscribers and content that is read by subscribers who already pay and um, continue their subscription, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I read on Digiday, I don't know if it's still working, but that you had a special subscription package for people uh, under 30 years under old. Under 30, yes. Yes, yes. to get we more. Continue that. Yes, and course. I think it's a big, big challenge now for many media, uh, media how to reach out these younger people, like how successful is it? How do you reach them out? Yes. Um, well, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge, I'd say. <laughs> um, we are just uh, at the beginning of testing, so we offer a special price point for for this audience. Um, they do not have to pay twenty euros per month, but twelve euros per month. Um, and we um, are at the moment are working on on marketing strategies for this audience because we think that um, we have to to make sure that we. Um, we can explain how we work and why um, our journalism we produce is worth to be paid for. Um, and so we work on things like uh, a climate change special for those audience. Um, we try to, um, to build with the editorial team um, special digital bundles that will come next year, but we're just talking about that right now um, to to uh, give give the, the younger audience the opportunity to to search and find the right content um, they want to pay for, yes. But do you also try to reach them somehow via social media? Because we know that a lot of younger people read yes. news through social media. Yes, it's hard because I think you have to, to find the, the right ratio between free content and, and then you have to find the, the right the right timing to uh, to convert them to a subscription, and I think the uh, the really um, hard challenge is that these that the younger audience tends to just is used to um, get everything for free on social, um, and I think we have to explain why why it's worth to be to be paid for this thing that is behind be the paywall. And then my follow-up question, which is also Jan, is asking how do you actually convince people to pay for journalism when so much uh, online content is for free? You, you just mentioned that you have to convince. How do you do it? Okay, one <laughs> is the topic like climate change, which is the topic they care about. Yes. What are, are the talking points more? How do you try to? Yes. Um, well, I think we, we test a different uh, communication routes to, to, uh, to, to convert people. And I th in, in my opinion... And the more content you put behind the paywall, the better it is, because it makes it visible that um, that the premium content and the interesting stuff, um, which which makes a lot of work for all the the journalists they um, who who make it, um, is is worth to be paid. Um, and of course, we try things uh, like word of mouth. Um, advertising where we um, give our subscribers a free code to share with their friends just to um, get them in contact with the premium contact, uh, content and then um, we hopefully that they realize that this is worth to be paid for um, but I think the, the most Im important thing is that the editorial team um, has a pay first 
mission to compete. Okay, Vivka, thank you very much. It was very interesting and useful presentation. So, thank you.